Okay, yay, yay, I'm back. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> that was terrible. I don't know what in the world happened there. I have no clue what happened. Oh, Lord help me. So, I hope we're back. Are we back? I hope we're back. If you can see this, please let me know. <laughs> a thumbs up say hello something <laughs> okay we're back for the day yay <laughs> i was going huh like that's all i could see on my little screen because it was all messed up lord help me it's a monday what do you say it's monday so guys yay um sorry for the craziness that was me doing this in the camera hopefully uh now you are <laughs> you are back with me and we're good to go oh gosh happy memorial day everybody i hope that you are having a great day so far um thank you so much for joining me for those of you who do not know who i am my name is kelly dale i am the owner of off the beaded path i have a physical bead store here in forest city north carolina and uh, we are always online at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Um, no, Sammy, Sammy just texted. He said, is the phone off? Let me turn the phone off so it won't ring while we're doing this. Oh, okay, sorry about that. But, again, you can find me easily online, 24 hours a day, at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Um, if this is your first time joining in, basically, uh, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I log in and we do a live video step-by-step -step to kind of have fun and do something together while we have to be socially distanced apart. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I look forward to these times with all of you. Uh, we've got a lot of new people who come on every day, but we have a lot of the same people on here. So it's really, really, really nice to see everybody. Okay. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me. Um, Saturday, I started kind of not feeling well and I uh, was not well Saturday and Sunday. I did nothing. So I'm kind of back to um, back to feeling better but my voice is still kind of crackly and going from here and there. So hopefully we will get through today. You guys, I feel like a little mother hen who is so proud of her, all her little chicks who are leaving the nest and doing, oh, so good. Um, a lot of you posted pictures for me of your triangles that you guys have been working on. Um, and guys, Oh, y'all are doing so good. I'm so proud of you. So, if you missed last week's video, we did 3D triangles. So, for those of you who are normally on the chat, you'll notice Jazzy. So, this is Jazzy's finished bracelet. So, Jazzy was working on his. And here is the original, what they were he was playing with. And then that's what he finished up with. So way to go, Jazzy. He's not going to be on here today because, um, let's see. Oh, he had something else to do, but he said he would be back tomorrow. All right, here's another one. Connie Blank. She made a beautiful triangle set here. A little three, uh, two stacked on top of each other and then did her earrings. Candice Moore Donnell. You guys, look how cute. They remind me of Sherbert and Summer, and I just love them. So, again, this is um, Candice Moore Donnell's. Okay, Leslie True. Leslie did a good job. She's done her triangles, and she's done her squares there. Nice. Then we have... Um, Oh, please, please, if you're on here, I'm sorry if I botched your name. Nineveh Douglas's cute, cute, cute little triangles there as well. Her triangle earrings. Vicki Gibson, she had fun with her triangles. She put two on top of each other and stacked them to make a pendant. So that turned out really well. <clears throat> 
Allison Fillins. I think it's Fillins or Pylins. Allison's got a jump start on hers. Um, Bernadette Pat. I don't know if, Ber yes, Bernadette's on here. She's been working on hers. Look at her pretty colors, the purple and blue. Got a couple more. This is Charlene Birdzels. Um, and sorry, Charlene, it cut part of your, your bracelet off. But it's so cute. She did hers in beach ball colors. And then, this is Belinda Swanson Knoll. I don't know if Belinda's on here yet today or not. But look at Belinda. She got all sorts of fun and played with hers. So, yes. Love them. You guys did a fabulous, fabulous job. I am super proud of each of you um, who um, made them and had the courage to post your finished pieces and share those with me. You guys did a fantastic job. So, way to go. So, today, we're going to be working on the three-dimensional squares. Um, we have this um, instant download ebook for sale on my website. It is at www.offthebeatedpathbeadstore.com, and it has all of the 3D patterns in it. Um, let's see. Guys, has anybody seen Jason on here today? I don't think I have seen him so far. So, Catherine Brooks, I see you're on here. If you don't mind, can you help me out um, and post the links for me? I appreciate it if you would. Um, that way we'll be good to go. Um, let's see. So, somebody asked, did I see yours on Instagram? Um, unless you tagged me, I don't think I did. So, I don't know. Annie Mae, I got your email. I hope that you got my email back and you're good to go there. So, um, so yeah. So, we are going to be working again on the 3D square. So, if you have the ebook, um, it's going to be on page six. This is what we're going to be doing today. It's really easy. It's two colors. You need one gram of a size 11 delicate to be your accent color. Those are going to be in the four corners. You also need two grams of a second color of delica. This is going to be basically where the silver is and where the red is. So it's going to be not the corners, but the fill in sections of our square. You're going to need about <clears throat> two yards of a thread. And again, you can use 1G, you can use Fireline, you can use kind of whatever you want. I'm going to be using a size 10 needle today. Um, I'll probably have to switch over to a size 12 at some point, um, but I just had a 10 on my mat, so that's what I grabbed. Um, you can use regular size 11 seed beads to do it, but I don't recommend it. You are going to get the best results using your size 11 Delica beads, okay? So, just to know that. All right, so, um, let's see. Um, I really figured, uh, if I remember right, Bernadette, the two yards is going to do two squares. So, you can do one square with one yard of thread. Um... Deborah says, so if you want to make them larger, you would add more main color in the odd numbers. Yes, exactly. And we will talk about that um, as I flip the camera around. So, I am going to uh, flip the camera around. So, just give me one second. Okay. Um, Claire. Okay, Claire. Um. I am on Instagram, but I am at Beaded Path on Instagram. So, that's probably why I didn't see um, see that. Okay. So, I'm going to move the camera around. I'm trying a little bit something different today. So, again, if you get motion sickness, please look away for one minute here as I move the camera and get us into position to be able to do the video today. I'm just glad it's not pouring the rain yet. He's waving. He's over there getting packaging orders for you guys and getting them ready. <clears throat> Let's see. So, Mary, you're left-handed. 
Um, Mary says, love watching, but I can't join in on the fun. I have a hard time being left-handed. Um, well, Mary, the good thing is all you have to do is you're going to do it exactly like I do, just in um, the opposite way, just the opposite direction. You have said all seed beads are not the same, but are all delicates the same? Um, okay, here's what I'm going to say about that. Let's see. All right, so I'm looking here to answer a couple of questions. Okay, Jeff, if your audio is not working, make sure your audio is turned all the way up. And if somebody will please type this into Jeff uh, Traver, uh, make sure your audio is turned all the way up. And if um, you still don't get any audio, refresh your page. Okay, so back to our all, um, our all delicates the same. Technically, they are. Okay, technically they are, but some finishes on Delica beads make them a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Um, technically, they are all exactly manufactured the same way, but the finishes can change the size of them just a little bit. So because it's Memorial Day here in the United States and... Um, I don't, yeah, and um, we have our 4th of July Independence Holiday coming up soon. Um, I decided, oh, hang on one second, you guys. Let me make sure that this is set up here and good to go. Okay. I wanted to do, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to do something kind of in those colors. <clears throat> so today, I'm going to be using DB723, which is Opaque Dark Cranberry. Um, and I'm using DB756 in opaque royal blue. Okay, so it's a bank holiday, so it must be Memorial Day everywhere. Okay. So in the pattern, it says um, thread a needle onto one yard of thread. <clears throat> thread on one accent, so the accent are gonna be your corners, and seven main color, four times. And again, if you want a larger square, add more main colors in odd numbers. Okay, so one accent color, so I think I'm gonna use the blue as my accent, and seven main color. Oh, and I see uh, Katarina is on here. So, Katarina, I see that, um, was it yesterday? Was uh, your last day of kind of lockdown in the Czech Republic? I noticed the, um, oh, the honest gods were live last night. <clears throat> so, let's see. Two, four, six, seven. Mama is on here. Hello, Mama. Um Christy, Grayson's little graduation went well. Thank you for asking. I'll show you a picture here in just a minute. Three, four, five, six, seven. He had a ball. Okay, so I did one accent and seven main, and you're going to do that four times. So one, two, three, and four. And make sure to double count. Make sure you have seven. Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, seven. Okay. Let these beads fall. Tie the beads into a circle and go through the last bead added. All right. So, to do a knot, you are going to just, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so Marjorie, if I go too fast for you, pause the video. Just tap the center of your screen and the pause button will come up. Okay, so I've got my finger into my little circle here and I'm not pulling it all the way tight there. You can see I've got some thread 
and I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. You wanna be very careful not to get the thread caught up into the knot. A lot of times I would just say, oh, we'll go back through them again. You don't wanna go back through them again because you're gonna go through this ring of beads a couple of times. So we wanna make sure we're kind of good to go. <clears throat> And also, you don't want this super tight. You wanna leave a little slack in your ring. So that way, as you work um, and you add your beads, it will kind of um, fill in all your little slack and gaps and things like that. So I'm gonna put one more little knot in here. All right, so. So Chrissy was asking, y'all, here's my baby. This was the other night uh, when he graduated on Friday. So there he was in his little blue cap and gown for his kindergarten graduation. He was so ex not excited to be there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so when you get done, this is what it should look like. Number two, thread on a main, oh, 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 I didn't do this. Let all the beads fall, tie them to a circle, and go through the last bead added. So the last bead is actually going to be one of our main colors. Okay, so I'm not going through the accent. I'm going through a main color here. Let's see, somebody said, what are you making for your holiday dinner? Um, you know, honestly, I think it's probably gonna be hot dogs today. And it's just because we have hot dogs in our, our refrigerator right now. <clears throat> Thread on a main color, skip one main color, and go through the next main color. So I'm gonna pick up a main color. That was my red. I'm going to skip a main color and go through the next main color. All right, just like this. Hello to everybody jumping in. We are working on our 3D square today. Okay, repeat twice more. So we pick up a main color, skip a main color, and go through a main color. Pick up a main color, skip a main color, and go through a main color. Today I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using 1G thread today. Again, you can pretty much use any kind, but I'm just using the 1G. All right, so we're to a corner here. We only have our one little bead, so I'm to a corner, so I'm gonna pick up two accents. And I'm going to skip the accent and go through the very next main color here. Again, just like the triangle from last week, our sides of our square are going to be peyote stitch. Our corners are going to be herringbone stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do this all the way around. I'm back to main color, so I pick up a main color. I skip a main and go through the next main. Okay, so Evelyn says, what's the difference between my Yuki Dura line and the new Dura thread? Um, I honestly can't be 100% specific on, on that, Evelyn, because I don't really use my Yuki's Dura line, so I really couldn't say. I carry it in my store. I just, I don't use it. Um, Myrna is saying that we are sold out of a lot of our 1G. Yes, we are sold out a lot of the 1G, um, but it's because the distributors are out of it as well. Um, I am trying to order from another company. It's just getting it here is the problem.
Okay, I'm gonna keep going around here with my main colors. See, I almost messed up. I almost picked up two there. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. We're just working around. So, Karen, you must have um, been on our first live a few minutes ago. I have no clue what happened when I logged in. It said that um, the orientation was locked, which it wasn't. So, I have no clue. But we're back, and I'm glad you found us. <laughs> oh, would you recommend Fireline if you are a very loose stitcher or stitch with 1G? Okay. Now... This is just my personal opinion, Jay Kaiser. Okay, so completely my own opinion. Um, but if it were me, yes, if you are a very loose stitcher, I would stick to using, um, I would go to Fireline. Um, it's going to help you a lot with your tension and your consistency. Okay, so I have two of my blue beads here. Now, I am to a corner, but I'm also to where I need to do a step up. So what this means is I have to finish the row, so I have to skip the accent and go through the main color. This finishes out the row, okay? Then, once I do that, then we're ready for the step up. So the step up is simply gonna be through the very next bead here that's sticking up. This one is the first bead in the new row, okay? So when you do it, that's what your little piece should look like at this point. So that is going to put us, well, must I have my pages out of whack here. Okay. <clears throat> so that puts us all the way to number six. So now number seven was the step up, which we did. So number eight, thread on one main color and go through the next main color sticking up. Repeat once more, okay? So this is the kind of fun part because we're just gonna pick up a bead and go through the next bead sticking up. Well, hey, Judy, thanks for watching from um, Louisiana. So we pick up a main and go through a main sticking up. Pick up a main and go through a main sticking up. Now, this time, we're going to pick up our main. And when we pick up our main, we're going to go through the first accent. So of our two beads here, we're going to go through the one. I'm gonna thread on two accents, and I'm gonna go through the very next accent bead. Okay, so this is what's gonna make that. And again, if, <laughs> if it doesn't do what you want it to do, you have to make them sit like they need to sit. So they're gonna sit just kind of on top of each other like this. So we're just gonna go around doing exactly what I just did. We're just gonna pick up one and go through the next bead here. One main.
So Nancy is asking about the beads that I'm using today. Nancy, um, I think some people have answered you, but I'm using a size 11 Delica. The red is DB723 and the blue is DB756. So again, I'm to the corner and I pick up the one bead. So now I'm coming out here and this is where I pick up two of the accent. And then I go through the very next accent there. Thread on one main and go through the next main. And I did get a Delica bead order sent in today, first thing this morning. So I don't know how long it'll take with, you know, everything COVID, but hopefully um, the Delicas will get here in a timely manner. And we're still working, putting Toho's in the computer. Okay, so I'm to a corner again. I pick up the two beads and I come through the very next bead there on my corner. And I'm back to my accents. Let's see, um, Katarina, we are actually in phase two of our reopening. Um, so basically what that mean, means is of 5 p.m. last, let's see, as of 5 p.m. this past Friday, um, our restaurants could open at half capacity for indoor seating and our salons could open back up. So we are supposed to be on this for five weeks. All right, so as you can see right here, I still have one more main color. So I have to pick up the main color and I have to go through the last speed of the row. So if we do the regular peyote, we skip one, we go through one. So I have to go through the lower one here. If I try to go through this upper one here, it's gonna be wonky. So you have to finish the row. If you wanna be, um, if you wanna do kind of your step up at the same time, you can go through these two beads here and that finishes your row and does the step up. So when you pull it through, this is what you've got. Now, the thing about it too, if you've noticed, is each round that we do, our step up moves over one bead. So originally we were right here at the corner, now we've moved over one bead and we'll kind of be going around. Um, no, Katerina, I think we are going to have a whole new normal and it's gonna be nothing like our old one was which is okay, I guess. Okay, <clears throat> so now we are basically just gonna go around, um, trying to see how many times we are gonna do what we just did. We have to have one, two, three, let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so we have to go around one more time. So we go around, put our main colors in, Okay. And when I get to that corner, again, remember, I put my bead on and I go through the first accent. And yeah, exactly, Katerina. Um, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, it's easy to look at what we've lost throughout everything, throughout COVID-19. It's really, really easy to look at everything we've lost. But I mean, I look at all that I've gained during this time, 
Um, I've gained knowing a lot of you and getting to talk to you each day, um, you know, here on the lives. And I think some of you have made friendships from the lives. Um, you know, it's given me a time, even though our bead business has never been busier, it's given us a time to rest. Um, it's given me a time to spend more time with my son and my family. It's brought back Sunday dinners at my mother-in-law's house. Um, it has brought a new appreciation for school teachers and what they do, as well as a new appreciation for all of our medical professionals. So, you know, it's real easy to look at what we've lost, but if you look at what you've gained as well, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it can change your perspective on things. So again, you can see I'm just working around my circle, popping in, popping in these main colors. And when I get to the corners, again, I pick up two of my accents and go through the next accent. And then I just work down my sides, picking up those main colors. Hello, uh, from those of you who are just joining me, um, we are doing the 3D square. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to take this 3D square that we just made. Jazzy uh, requested that I show how to make a ring out of it. So tomorrow, I'm going to show how to make a ring out of this fun little 3D square. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to show how to add a Rivoli or a Chaton to the 3D square to kind of give you something else you can use your 3D square with. So lots of fun things coming up for this week. Okay, so I'm here to back to my little um, step up. So I can, I've only got my one bead left to add here. So remember, if this is the bead I have to go through here, if I want to do my step up at the same time, I can go through those two beads right there. Okay. Um, Susanna, I honestly, um, I'll, I'll think about it. That's, that's kind of all I can say at this point is I'll think about it. So, um, and Gloria, honestly, um, the Chaton will be an SS39, uh, which is an eight millimeter, if I get it done, um, or, or I know how to do the Chaton, but I want to try Rivoli too. So, um, I'll try to let you guys know maybe tomorrow um, on that. So, here's what we've got so far. Now, we have to do one more row because we need to put in our corners here. We're only gonna have one bead in the corner, just like our triangles. So we've gotta do one more round. We'll have six beads here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll have one bead in the corner. Uh, Jay Kaiser, I don't see why not. Honestly, I'm gonna kinda have to play, um, play and see what I come up with for Wednesday. I've not really even done anything for it yet. Um, yes, thank you, Deborah. Yes, we got all of the um, the water cleaned up. We still have the machine going to kind of suck the water out of the air and, um, you know, try to get all the water out we can. But, yes, we are cleaned up. We were back open for business on Thursday. So, so looky right here. That's what our corner is going to look like right there. Hello to everybody jumping in. Uh, 
uh, Katarina? Yeah, I sure do. I have several wrap bracelet videos on um, the channel, and actually I have a new one that I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks to show you guys as well. Thanks to everybody jumping in. Um, yeah, Dana, she said, will a small cabochon work as well? Um, sure. Don't see why not. Candace K, I really hope that you do get to come through. I would love that. We ship all over the world. So, and we ship by package weight. So you have to actually put the items in your cart to be able to um, see how much the cost is. And I will warn you right now, it seems like a lot of our um, international packages are taking, um, we've had one package that took up to, it's been almost eight weeks. So the international shipping is taking a good while because the postal service is slammed with all of our online orders. <laughs> Because, I mean, Lord, it's not like we can all go out to stores. Okay. So, what I'm going to do real quickly here. Um, I noticed that my thread is starting to get tangled. So, that means I have some... Um, oh, I have some, some twists in here. So, I am going to... Kind of do this number and you can see how, how I'm, so I'm just running my finger down the thread to get any of the twist out of my thread there. Uh, Barbie, you're going to need exactly what we're using today. Just size 11 delicas. Barbie asked what we're going to be needing tomorrow for the video. And again, it's exactly what we're doing today. So if you want to be ready for tomorrow's video, you can go ahead and have one of these squares finished and ready to go. Because I'm not going to show how to do the square tomorrow since I'm showing today. So it'd be a little bit of a quicker. Which thread holds up the longest? Um, hmm. I really, to me, all the threads kind of hold up about the same as far as their duration. I think it's more of what you're stitching with is, or what you're actually using as far as your beads are going to determine the longevity of your thread because especially if you're using crystals or even some seed beads that have really sharp edges um you know it's gonna do a little bit more wear and tear on your thread than say you know regular seed beads or something like that so you just need one gram to make two squares you only need one gram of your accent color beads and you need two grams of your main color beads okay so my thread is coming out here again i'm going to do the last bead for the row which is this one and then do my step up here but I'm not actually gonna do the step up. I'm just gonna finish the row because this was my last row. Um, let's see, yeah, Brenda. Um, and I think, didn't too, um, didn't the Canadian, the post office have a, um, a mail strike or something as well? For some reason, I remember kind of hearing about that. So here is what it should look like at this point. Hey, Joy Jefferson. I'm glad you're on here today. Roxanne, this is what your piece should look like at this point. Um, Paula, I'm about three hours from Atlanta. Um, you have a great bead store down there near you if you live in Atlanta, Paula, um, called Bijou. It is in Brasselton, Georgia. It's amazing. Okay. So, 
Okay, so we are getting down to where we are now going to kind of work in the center and work our other side. So go through the last bead of the row and then step up to the first bead added in the new row. Okay, I'm, I'm past that. Hold on one second, guys. Once the round is complete, stitch to the bead to exit the inner main color of the square. For my example, I will be starting at the first main color sticking up right after an accent bead. So if you can see here, I'm coming out of this bead here right before an accent bead and I'm in the center. Huh, that's strange. Um, maybe was, could, I don't know. I was thinking uh, somebody told me Alberta and a couple other places were on a mail strike. I mean, not the second, but they were a few weeks ago. Okay, so I'm just stitching through the beads. Again, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you don't see the thread. So this is where I'm coming out. I'm coming out in the center, and so that I can stay right with my pattern, I am coming out right there before an accent. Okay, everybody good with that? Everybody see where I'm coming out? Now, what I'm going to do, I've tied this, I've stitched through a bead, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of this little tail thread. It's getting on my nerves, I'm going to get rid of it. Now, we are going to start working on the center. So we're done with the one side, we're gonna work the center and then work out on the other side. So we pick up one bead and we come through the next bead here to the inside. Okay, so for now, it's still gonna kinda lay flat. <coughs> okay, and I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna pick up a main color and I'm gonna come through the next main color. Uh, okay, Catherine says, Kelly, if you wanted to use red, white, and blue, where is this where you would add the white? So if you do red, white, and blue, you would almost have to do it like every other row Catherine, adding your white, um, mainly because if you started it here, if, if you did this, then you could do one side white with blue corners and one side would be red with blue corners. Um, I think it's just something you kind of have to play with there. Okay, so I am here at my corner now. So I'm going to pick up one main color and I'm going to go through the accent color so I've got one accent color there so I've got a main color and I'm going to go through the accent that's here in the corner I'm going to pull this through okay then pick up a main color and I'm going to go through the next main color sticking up in the center of my square And so you'll see here, that's kind of made those beads now pop out and that's what we want. So I'm just gonna work around, putting my main colors in now. Yeah, Joy, thanks, I'm good, Joy. I just, um, I wasn't feeling so hot over the weekend and I'm feeling better today. It's just my voice is all kind of cracky. And Is there any way to get notified on items when they're out of stock? You just kind of have to keep checking, Sonia. Um, I don't think that our system allows to get notifications when an item is back in stock. If you'll add the item you want to your wish list, it's much easier because you can go into the wish list and see if it's back in stockers without having to kind of, you know, go through the whole website to find the item again. So if you're looking for um, Delicas, I don't know what you're looking for, 
Um, if you want to tell me what you're looking for, I can kind of tell you if we're expecting it in anytime soon. So that way you'll know. So I've got my Delica. I'm going to go through the corner, just the one corner there. And then pick up the Delica. Okay, Sonia, the bobbins, it's probably going to be another two weeks before they get here. Um, because they are on order, but the company has not shipped them out yet. And they are closed all this week, the place that I get those from. So, like I'm saying, it should be hopefully two weeks. Okay, the KHB. How do I get over my fear of thread not being as secure as Fireline? Um, oh, gosh. The KHB, just um, as Nike says, just do it. Just jump in. You'll never, um, you'll never know if you like a thread and um, how much you're going to like a thread till you use it. Um, what I would say is, you know, just pick one and go because everybody um, who asked me that, the KHB, so everybody's going to have their own favorite thread that they like and they're going to tell you, oh, you should use this or oh, you should use this. Um, just pick one. Pick one and go. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, so I'm here at this corner, and I have got my bead here that I need to go through. So this is the last bead of the row. Then I'm going to step up by going through this bead here. So I'm going through two beads here. All right, bye, Katerina. Good night. You get them boys. Okay. By Lori B two o two. Um. Okay. So, Sir Out Saralba Saralba. I hope I did not do that. Uh, Saralba, you may want to if you had a hard time with the triangle from last week's video. You may want to go and watch the original video that I did for the triangle as well. Okay. So I've got this is what my piece looks like so far. You can see that it's these middle beads are kind of popping up now like they should and that's exactly what we want so now i'm going to work around picking up my main colors hello hello to everybody joining in thanks for joining in today so now here in the corner see i'm here to a corner i'm going to back to picking up my two accents and then I come through the next main color, the very next one. So what'll happen once I pull these threads, I have a new corner. Um, the bags on my board are 50 gram bags of beads. Could you? make one of the two corner beads in each corner white to make it red, white, and a blue square. You sure can. Uh, Patricia, I honestly don't know. I'd have to look. I can't remember what went in the mood ring. Um, I think 1G or Durathread. I'm not 100% sure. Hey, Sammy, can you check that for me? Can you look up the mood ring kit? And Patricia, it should say on the back of your kit cover that came with your kit, I've got my two beads again there in the corner. So I'm just going to keep working around this row, putting my main colors in. And then when I get to a corner, <laughs> oh gosh. So, um, So, okay, so if the thread you got was waxy, Patricia, um, it was six pound fire line because that one we either put in six pound fire line or Dura thread, both worked. So we put in both of them. So if it's very, very waxy, you got fire line. If it wasn't very waxy, you um, can, uh, you got Dura thread.
Okay, guys, so I'm to a corner here. Let's see. Oh, Doreen, I am so glad to hear that you're loving that Nozu Sunoco thread. Okay, so I'm to a corner, and I'm going to, you know, pick up my two accents. But now, let me see if I can hold it this way, and you can see it a little better. You can see here... <laughs> hey, Sammy. Joy says, hey, Sammy, are you guys ready for my arrival in one month and 26 days? Joy, did you hear him? He said he's moving out of the house in one month and 25 days. <laughs> so I have picked up my main color. To finish my row, I have to go through this bead here. And then to do my step up, I have to go through this one. So I'm going through these two beads here. Okay, the blue that I'm using is matte royal blue, and it's DB756. And you guys, look what I did. I didn't put a bead in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, now before I go any further, and you can see now I'm starting to get that second side made. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna pull the thread, get any twist out of it. Oh, miss you too, Joy, can't wait to see you. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. We gotta go until we have three sets of two in our corner, just like this side where we got three sets of two, and then we have our point. We have to have three sets of two on this side. So we've got one set, so we need two more sets. Yes, Patricia, I love the Dura Thread as well. Um, and the Dura Thread is really affordable. It's nice to work with. Okay, so I'm to the corner. Well, hey, Beth Schaefer. Got one bead here, and I'm gonna go through the next, very next bead. Ah, oh, crystals on here as well. Okay, so you see how I kinda had to make it do what I wanted to do there, because it didn't lay the way I wanted it to. I got tickled, I don't know, I'm not sure if Belinda is, uh, is on here today or not, but Belinda, when she posted the picture of her triangles from last week, she said she fought with the triangles or the, the beads all weekend and the beads won. <laughs> but her piece turned out beautiful, so. Okay, so again, I'm to my corner. Ah, Beth has the day off. Nice, Beth. If you are looking for a house in Ohio, my girl, Beth Schaefer, is the girl to talk to by any chance. If you're looking to move to Ohio or you have a house in Ohio, you want to sell, you call my girl, Beth. You can really see now how this is coming together. It's a really, a really fun shape to work with. You could, yeah. Um, you guys are throwing out some great suggestions of how to, you know, alternate your colors and do all this fun stuff. Um, so if you work and you do some of these that you are um, suggesting, please post them in our Facebook group. Um, let's see. Where did your rainbow board go? I still have it. Um, I the, My ultimate board, I love, 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 love uh, the new ultimate bead board from um, the Bead Wrangler. 
Um, I actually have another project going on that board right now. So that's why I've got this one kind of just for my classes, right? That are my online things right this second. Okay, so I'm ready to do that little step up. It's a little bit hard to see because now it's folded over. Um, so now they are gonna go through these two beads here. This is the last bead of the row and then we do the step up. So I've got one more row and then we can connect it. You guys, I'm loving it and it's gonna be a really cute ring. Um, the here's Here's a fun thing. Um, and I'll try to link tomorrow's video to it. Several years ago, I did a video on how to take one of these Swarovski um, open square stones. It's kind of like this one and make a ring out of it. So that's kind of the same thing I'm going to be showing in tomorrow's video. So this will replace, I guess, the crystal stone. And it's a lot of fun to do. So I hope if you get your square done, or even if you don't get your square done, that you'll join us tomorrow. I'll be going uh, live at 1 p.m. Eastern to uh, show how to make the this into a ring. So I'm just working this last row real quickly so I can show you guys how to do the connection. And I think I seen Jan Norman on here. Jan, happy belated birthday. I posted on your Facebook page this morning. Oh, I'm such a happy girl. I'm loving this red and blue. This red and blue is amazing. I'm almost around to the fourth corner, guys, and then... I don't normally ever do red. I stepped out of my box today. So I'm to a corner, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on my two beads. No, sorry guys, the bead retreats have been full since the end of January. There's been some chatter about doing possibly a um, retreat in a box, but honestly, I've gotta get through the retreats before I can think about a retreat in a box. <laughs> okay, so I'm to my last bead here and again it's kind of hard to see so I'm going to be going through those two beads there to do my step up yep Evelyn you are five hours ahead of us and if you're in Prague, you're six hours ahead of us. Okay, friends, here we go. We've got this both sides done. Now all we need to do is zip it, and your 3D square is complete. So if you'll look here, your, you'll see it's kind of zigzagged. So my thread is coming out of a bead here on the left. I'm gonna go to the next bead sticking up on the right. Okay, um, Buttercup, I don't know. Um, Buttercup says she don't know what she said wrong, but her poppy turned out fairly well. Buttercup, honey, I don't see where you've posted um, posted up through there, but I'm so glad that your poppy turned out well. So, so glad to hear that. 
Okay, so my thread's coming out here on the left, so I'm gonna come over here to the next bead on the right. Then I'm gonna to come to the next bead on the left sticking up, which is gonna be a corner, one of my corner beads here. If I use Silver Line Red Bead DB602, is there something I can put on it to keep the finish from coming off? Um, okay, so you're using a Silver Line color. The finish really isn't what comes off as much as the inside of the finish is what comes off. And with the silver line, unless you have a Duracoat silver line, um, it's hard, it's especially, now if you're gonna make it into a ring, I definitely don't suggest using a silver line color, uh, Deborah, because of the fact that it will, over time, that finish will come off. Um, if you're going to make this into earrings or something like that, though, then yes, absolutely you can use it. But, uh, and you really won't have to worry about the finish too much because it's not getting rubbed on or anything like that. But um, if you're going to make it into a ring, I definitely suggest opaque colors and colors that are not dyed whatsoever. The Duracoats work really, really well. For those of you who don't know what a Duracoat bead is, it's a finish on the seed bead that gives it supposed to be a permanent finish where the finish will not come off. Um, but unfortunately, people who have high acidity in their skin, um, it can still come off. So... Yeah, the square is fun. The square is a lot of fun. I really, really like doing the square. You guys, you can tell that number one, Preston is not on here today, so he must not be working. So Preston's not on here today um, because we're not talking a whole lot about food today. But for those of you who do wanna talk about food, <laughs> I posted um, the link on my blog. So if you go to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, there is a little link you can click on at the top for my blog. I posted the recipe for the Instant Pot Spaghetti. No, not Instant Pot. Um, yeah, it is. It's called the Instant Pot, right? Yeah, my Instant Pot. Instant Pot Spaghetti. I thought it turned out really, really well. Loved how it tasted. So I posted the recipe on there today or day before, yesterday maybe. So that is on the blog if you want something new to try with your Instapot. Super, super, super easy. And like I said, we brought it for leftovers. I think it was Friday afternoon we brought it for leftovers. Um, and it was even better. Leftover, like warmed up again. So I'm just going through, just zipping up this piece. Um, I used regular ground beef. You could definitely also use turkey or something like that. Shoe fly cake. What is that? Sue Crosley, you can't leave me, you can't leave me with that. What is a shoe fly cake? I have never heard of that. I do have, um, I, for those of you who have been talking about the Instapot um, cheesecake, I have my graham crackers now, so we may try the Instapot cheesecake very, very soon. Molasses crumb cake. Oh my, well that just sounds really good. Okay guys, I've almost got it. And look at that. Would you look at that? Oh. There's a lot of words I want to say right now, and none of them are good. <laughs> oh, that's just a hot mess. Well, you know what? I'm going to try to fix the hot mess. So that way, if the hot mess happens to you, you'll know how to fix it. If I can find my little ripper. Where's my little ripper outer? Uh, 
Oh, where is it? Well, I can't find my tulip all. That's what I need right now. All right, so I want to fix this actually while we're on the video because that way if it happens to you, you'll know how to fix it. So, um, okay, and look, look right here. That's what was happening right there. You see how it's, to, I'm starting to get to the, the part in that thread where it's starting to kind of get a hot mess. So, I'm going to go ahead and save myself. I should have done that. Cut some of that off. Okay, so then here's how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to come to where I was. So I've got this thread sticking up here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to trim this thread off. Okay, I'm going to get rid of it. I ain't even going to worry about that thread. And I'm going to come through that same bead. Carolyn, you know, I, I haven't felt good over the weekend, so I just didn't even do my nails this week, um, this weekend. But don't you worry. Tomorrow, I, I think I'm going to do yellow. I think I'm going to do that bright yellow just because, you know, it. I want something fun. Fun, bright, and summery. Okay, so I've got a really long tail here. What in the world is that? Where did that come from? Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got a really long tail here. And I've got my thread here. And I'm going to keep zipping up my piece. But Joy says she's doing uh, her nails right now. I love it. Rock the rainbow nails again. Evelyn, you know, I want to. i got to find me one more color, though. I like color. And um, not afraid of bold colors. And I need one more bright, fun, bold color. Okay, so look at, so I've got it all the way zipped. And now what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to stitch this thread through a few beads. I'm not gonna tie it off because if you tie it off, you're gonna see where that knot is. So I'm gonna stitch through some beads and get rid of this thread. Then I'm gonna put a needle on this end and I'm gonna stitch and zip through this last row of beads that I did and then I'll nip this thread so that I have my 3D square completed and ready to go for tomorrow. So here's the thing. I am gonna make a ring and I'm probably gonna put the ring on my pointer finger. Who knows, it may come over here. If you want to make the square bigger, do more beads in an odd count manner in your opening here. So the first row that you do. If you want it smaller, I think this one had, what, 11 beads? One, two, three, four, five, six, no, seven. Maybe you could try five beads. So you would do one, five, one, five, one, five, one, five. So you could do it just a little bit smaller, maybe only doing five beads in the center. You could make it bigger again by just adding more beads here to make it however big that you want it to be. So um, let me find the pattern book again because I wanna show you, if you enjoy making the squares, I did a pattern in the 3D ebook called Falling Off the Edge Pendant, and it uses three sizes of the squares, and then it uses an eight millimeter chiton. So that is another, if you like the squares, you may want to give that one a try because it's a really, really fun project. And you can see I made three different sizes there of the squares. So let me flip the camera around really quick here. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can get this to work in a little bit better for me. There, there we go. Okay, all right, so a couple of things. Um, okay, 
let me find it again here. So a couple of things, just wanted to remind you that all the patterns that I've been doing last week and this week, as far as the shapes are in the 3D shaped um, ebook on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. They are on sale for a limited time. Um, so you can grab that there if you want a print copy. Somebody wants to know what earrings I'm wearing today. These were made for me by my friend Vera. Um, these are just the skinny, uh, skinny, uh, narrow, I think they were called narrow, um, fringe earrings. Okay, so they're really fun. Just three different colors there. Love me some fringe earrings. You can make them as long or as short as you want them. Uh, for tomorrow's video, if you're going to hang out tomorrow, you are going to need a, um, if you're gonna make your square, of course, you need two colors of a size 11 Delica, and then you need another to go ahead and make the ring band for it as well. So you're just gonna need that, some thread, and a needle, just like we used today. Um, let me see, if you make the earrings, can you make a loop in one corner? Yes, you can attach, um, make a loop in one corner to make these into earrings. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, so I think that's kind of all that I had to talk about today and show you on that. So I hope you can join me tomorrow. Um, Lord willing, and I'm not feeling any worse, I'll be back tomorrow. If not, I'll, I'll find somebody to substitute. Even if Sammy has to come over and teach you guys what I want to do, <laughs> we'll get it. You think you can do that, Sammy? He said they could do it. So there we go. All right, guys, y'all enjoy the rest of your uh, Memorial Day holiday. And um, it was great to hang out with you again today. We'll talk to you later. Bye.